there. Welcome to this week's concept map presentation. My name is Dr. Dimple Hinduja. I'm one of the trust grade CT1. Today, we will be briefly covering approach to a patient with headache. Please bear in mind that this presentation will not cover the pathology and management of each condition, but rather the identification of it. So let's begin. Let's say we have a patient with headache. How do we determine the cause? Start by thinking of all the possible causes and then categorizing the differential diagnosis. There are two ways to list of possible differential diagnosis, each through the anatomical approach or via the surgical filter. Here, we class the diagnosis according to the surgical filter. That is, we categorize according to the pathology that belongs to. There is a mnemonic, like you can see, vitamin D, E. Large number of patients present with headache. Sudden onset headache accounted for 0.8% of emergency presentation and spontaneous subarachnoid hemorrhage represents an important differential diagnosis to consider in patient presenting with sudden onset headache. Here is the approach to thunderclap or rapidly escalating headache, onset to maximum intensity less than five minutes. Next, we are not just asking questions from a template, but actually using open or closed questions about fever, neck stiffness, any infections in the nose, sinuses, ears, or teeth to find out our patient has any CNS infection related headache. Cavernous sinus thrombosis most commonly complain of fever, headache, periorbital swelling, bulging of eyes, and pain. Another important crossroad is to look for focal neurology. Like you can see, for every symptom, there might be the case that can mimic a less serious diagnosis and lead to miss the life-threatening condition. Please carefully double check to identify and rule out life-threatening causes. It is our responsibility as a good clinicians to perform a thorough examination to gain the information we need to weigh out our differential diagnosis before coming up with the most likely causes of the illness. With thorough history of jaw claudication, scalp tenderness, morning headache, etc., and clinical findings, we can then conclude the most likely cause of illness and proceed with the management. Primary headaches are syndromes into themselves rather than signs of other diseases. Although potentially disabling, they are reliably not life-threatening, such as migraine, tension headache, cluster headache. In summary, we ask direct questions for thunderclap headache. Look for any signs and symptoms of angle closure glaucoma, infection, focal neurology, a well-taken history about jaw claudication, trauma, morning headache, then primary headaches are diagnosed clinically. 
Feel free to pause this video and take a moment to process this clinically useful way of organizing headache. What I would like to highlight here is that I do not recommend you to memorize these concept maps. Instead, we hope that through these concept maps, you will learn the process of diagnostic reasoning. Understanding the diagnostic thought process is useful for all those who wish to learn the art of clinical diagnosis. The ability to critically examine a list of differentials, rank them according to likelihood and pick up what does not fit is very imposing. These examples will let you know the symptom to diagnosis approach and you can create your own concept map. Thank you, I hope this video will be useful for you guys.